I know that there are some people who know Paris very well, and maybe you can help me uh, in, this in the sanctuary or those who are watching online. What is the best place in Paris? Let's say the best restaurant in Paris that doesn't have an Eiffel Tower view. A restaurant inside the Eiffel Tower. Sometimes you need to be inside to make a difference and change your perspective. But there comes a time when you have to take a step back and leave a place to see a wider picture. Vayomer Adonai el Avram, lech lecha, the eternal God said to Abram, go forth from your country, your people and your fathers and your birthplace to the land that I will show you. According to Rashi, lech lecha should be translated as go for your own benefit, lecha, for you, for your own good. There I will make of you a great nation, whilst here you will not merit the privilege. Sometimes you need to leave, to let it go, and change your location and environment to achieve a better future. A week ago, I had an honor of being a voting delegate for the 38th Zionist Congress. Established over 120 years ago by Theodor Herzl, today this is the only platform in the Jewish world which has a potential of representing all Jews, progressive and orthodox, secular and religious, left and right. Arzenu is the name of the fraction which represents progressive Jews there. It works in a coalition with other progressive, conservative, and central left-wing parties and organizations from all over the world. As a result, Arzenu has many delegates on their side, which means many votes, and therefore all other parties have to have no choice but to listen to us and consider us when they distribute budget, employ people, and organize programs. One of the practices and principles of the Congress is to make so-called wall-to-wall agreement. All parties have to come to an agreement and basically um, agree on who gets, that, who gets what position for the upcoming five years. Our leaders negotiated for two days and two nights, almost without sleep, and came to an agreement with other parties. As a result, my fellow delegates, delegates and I ended up voting for appointments, appointments which I personally do not agree with. Some of those people which we voted for are, a char are characters which I deeply disagree with, but still, I voted for them because their members voted for our leaders too. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I'm sure I'm not the only one who questions their integrity at this moment, at the moment of voting. Was it fair for me to make such compromises? What about our beliefs? What about our values? How can I keep integrity with myself while supporting those who I consider bringing damage to Israel? Not only the state, but the people of Israel. On the other hand, 
what would happen if we were, if we were to so, so principled that the agreement wouldn't pass? International progressive programs and a few people's jobs depend on it. Where is the line where I should have said enough? Lech lecha, go away from here and be a blessing somewhere else for my own benefit and for the benefit of others. Perhaps sometimes it is better to leave a place and to let others make compromises in their values. From the recent events in politics in this country, we know well that those who leave sometimes make a clearer and louder statement, and perhaps they make more difference than those who stay and try to change the system from within. So Abraham went, as the Eternal One had told him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. And they arrived there. Talmud, Tractate Rosh Hashanah, discusses the ways how people can improve themselves and those around them. At some point, it lists four ways to do so. Prayer, charity, changing one's name, and changing one's location. Both Abram and Sarai changed their locations as well as their names. Abram became Abraham or Avraham. The former name means exalted father, Avram, father on high or exalted father. Abraham means the father of multitude. What is so important in this one letter change? For me, it shows a subtle change of perspective from a point of view directed at yourself, from thinking about self-praise to a collective perspective, thinking about multitude, many, not just themselves. The same principle is reflected in Sarai's new name. Sarai, which in Hebrew means my princess with final yod, possessive suffix my, became Sarah, princess without yod. As a general concept, model and example for others. In Perkei Avot, the compilation of early rabbinic wisdom, Rabbi Shimon said, there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of kingship. But the crown of good name is superior to them all. Vayira Adonai el Avram, Vayomer, Lezar Acha Eten, what happened after is not a happy end yet. There was a famine in the land, so Abraham, so, so Abraham had to flee to Egypt, lie and fight for his life. Then there was a war. Then another test. Then another. He had to prove that the vision he had was worth it. The path to a good name and the journey to become a blessing to others is sometimes a dangerous and hard path to take. It is easier and perhaps more natural for any of us to think about our little worlds 
and focus on being comfortable and happy within our bubbles and boxes, especially now in the time of a great danger outside. But Abraham and Sarah chose a different path. They had hope and belief for a better future. They were the first, but not the only ones. After them, there were Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Hagar, Rebecca, Rachel, Moses, and many, many others. All of them made their choices. All of them wanted a better future, not just for their family, but for the future generations, for us. Perhaps this is why every time during Amidah, we say their names ne next to God's name. Each time we remember their choices in life, their journeys, their compromises, their values. God of Abraham saying, Lech Lecha, go forth to the place that I will show you. God of Isaac, saving the child from a violence of parent. God of Jacob, God of wrestling, struggling, the God, of, the God which gave Jacob another personality, another name, Israel, another chance. God of Moses, showing him how to be a good leader. God of Sarah, who gives her and her husband children when it seemed impossible. God of Hagar, who gives hope for a better future to her when the life is too hard to bear. God of Rebecca, supporting mother at the time of labor. God of Rachel, supporting her in her leadership when she had to make difficult decisions in life. May the God of our ancestors, ancestors support us, give us inspiration to see a wider picture. May we live in the world of our vision. May we always know when to make compromises and when to leave. May the God of our ancestors give us hope and help us to be in peace with the world, with the future, and with ourselves. Can you hear that, son? <laughs>